Right, hey guys, how are we doing? Back another video from Super Eye Patch Wolf, going through his uh, back catalogue, and I realised I haven't checked this one out. Why you should watch Paranoia Agent? And Paranoia Agent is like one of those anime films that has always been around whenever I've been like watching anime recommendations stuff like that. I've just never got round to watching it, and so I figured, let's see why I should actually dive in and check it out. So here we go. This is Super Eye Patch Wolf's video on why. You should watch Paranoia Agent. The Dancing Plague of 1518 is one of the stranger and more unsettling occurrences to ever be recorded in history. Really? It began when a woman stepped out onto the streets of Strasbourg, France, and without music or direction, began silently dancing. People were initially entertained, but yeah. things slowly grew more concerning when, after six days, she still hadn't stopped. What? And no way, is that real? 33 other people had joined her, all dancing in eerie silence without rest. No way, and what? if some That's sources weird. are to be believed, this occurrence lasted for an entire month, with as many as 400 people suffering Just the same dancing. dancing madness. That's mental. Some of whom even died from exhaustion and heat stroke before one afternoon... They all just stopped and returned to their daily lives. What? No, no, that is weird. The earliest recorded e. events of mass hysteria in that history. That is strange. And I've always been equally fascinated I've never heard and of that. freaked out by these occurrences. There's something so unsettling about entire communities of people falling victim to the same madness and delusion. As if reality Whoa. itself starts to warp under the weight of human perception. Yeah, that's strange. And this, friends, is the very subject that's at the core of the unsettling, surreal, and captivating Paranoia, Paranoia Agent. Agent. Right, okay. Produced in 2004 by Studio Madhouse, Paranoia Agent tells the story of a city terrorized by a string of violent attacks and the different effects those attacks have on various members of its community. Okay. While not an especially frightening show, Paranoia Agent is a show about fear and how terror and hysteria on a mass scale can breathe life into fictional concepts. Oof. And if that sounds familiar Ooh, to some perfect of the blue, yeah. in their Perfect Blue Whoa. video, that's because it is. Ah. Paranoia Agent comes from the legendary mind of Satoshi Kon, writer and director of Perfect Blue, oh. as well as other reality-bending works such as Millennium Actress and Paprika. And to Why have I not watched this film? <laughs> middle ground of these what the properties. Oh. Being more surreal and out there than Perfect Blue, but also far darker and more disturbing than Paprika or Millennium Actors. Oh my god, Paranoid I need to see this also film. has the distinct honour of being the only episodic series ever directed by Cohn, and it shows. His distinctive creative fingerprints are everywhere, Whoa, from the striking surreal visual direction to the unusual way its story is told. Rather than concentrate on one specific central character, each episode of Paranoia oh, Agent so it's a series. has a different story with its own distinct protagonist. Cool. With the cast of protagonists consisting of everything from school children to police officers to call girls. It's an unusual nice. structure. In fact, the only other anime I've ever seen operate this way is Durarara. But Whoa, while yeah, that yeah. show is about the serendipitous connections people make and how those connections Such are good in society in surprising ways... Paranoia Agent instead looks at how one tiny event can so drastically affect a community at large. Sweet. And the event that sets all these distinct narratives in motion is the assault of Tsukiko Sagi, who's also the main character of our first episode. Oh, right, okay, but then that spirals into everything else. Designer and the creator of the massively popular Moromi, a small pink dog who has developed a cover of the Hello thing, Kitty. Yeah. Right, cool, cool. Sakiko is under intense pressure at work to produce another mascot cash cow. Ooh. But in a scene that I'm sure will be painfully familiar to any illustrators out there, Sakiko spends her days slamming delete on her keyboard and oh. raising concept after concept, unable to come up with any fresh ideas. Pressure on Sakiko mounts until one night she's walking home, exhausted mm -hmm. and stressed to the point of collapse, when suddenly she falls victim to a brutal assault at the hands of a young boy. Oh, God. Wearing golden rollerblades and wielding a bent metal baseball bat. Without a suspect or even a motive to work with, police are left baffled by the attack. So it just even seems random and out of nowhere. All, until similar attacks begin occurring all over the city. Oh, God, why? All the same boy with the same 
twisted metal baseball bat. The story eventually gets picked up by the media who give the attacker the inappropriately cute title Lil Slugger Lil or in Slugger. Japanese Shonen Bato, which are both silly names so I'm just going to stick to the version of it inherent to my native tongue, which due to 12th century British shenanigans is English. This is the general structure <laughs> yeah. of Paranoia Agents episodes. We get a different main character struggling right, with some intense emotional crisis, emotion okay. crisis who eventually falls victim to, to the slugger, slugger. Right. but elevates the show above its more conventional episodic horror contemporaries like say Hellgirl is the unique way the characters of Paranoia Agent are written as well as the overall story these collective narratives begin to tell. Basically, the character writing behind Paranoia Agent concentrates on two specific aspects of each of its characters. The reality and day-to-day -day struggle in which each of these characters the live, through, right. and the fantasy of how they interpret this reality oh, to so what themselves. They want. Mm. And a lot of the horror of the show actually comes from this first part, the day-to-day -day reality of its characters. And if that doesn't sound particularly terrifying, that's because it isn't. Paranoia Agent doesn't really operate on the same spectrum of horror as something like, say, Perfect Blue. Right. It's more that the ideas that the show presents are disturbing on a more human and Real. relatable level. Right, yeah. Finding horror in subjects like social isolation, sexual repression, and abuse. And the advantage of utilizing such a particular style of horror with such a large cast of characters is that no matter who you are or what stage in your life you're at, you're likely to relate to at least one or more of the subjects the different episodes explore. For me personally, as someone who spent a lot of their career working in animation studios, the episode focusing on the disastrous production of the Moromi anime hit so close to home it was honestly a little chilling. Yeah. Watching as each member of the team slowly succumbs to the stress and panic in the face of impossible deadlines. Damn. And as they do, become victims of little sluggers' little slugger. vicious assaults. Like, what's going mm. And the subject matter of these episodes can occasionally grow extremely dark dealing with subjects like debilitating illness mm. and suicidal thoughts. Damn. But I think just as unsettling as some of the topics the show explores is the unique way it explores them. Right, how's it going that to That is, it? nearly with a kind of playful levity, which creates this intense feeling of dissonance in Paranoia Agents, as the tone of an episode clashes violently with the subject at hand. The primary example being episode 8, which is possibly Paranoia Agent... How many episodes are eight, there, then? but also it's most disturbing. It's an episode centering around three online friends meeting up for the first time for hmm. a fun-filled adventure in the countryside. And there's a genuine air of hijinks and whimsy to it until you realize what they're actually meeting up to Oh do. my god. The horror from Paranoia Agent comes from the show's Whoa. unique take on exploring the darkest parts of living in contemporary society. And it's this grounded, reality-based horror that generates the need for fantasy that's present in each one of its characters. Hmm. There's a quote from Satoshi Kon that I God. really like, in which he states, A world a person perceives is filtered by their own fantasy and paranoia. And Whoa. you can see this same quote reflected in every character of Paranoia Agent. Hmm. Rather than the show telling us how we should perceive each of its characters, the series is instead more focused on how they perceive see themselves, themselves right and the reality around them hmm. and all the delusion and fantasy than the reality of, of it all time. examples of this comes in episode 4, which tells the story of Officer Hirokawa, a crooked policeman who becomes indebted to the Yakuza and is forced to oh, commit a string of robberies in, some in order to pay off his debt and protect his family home. The really interesting part, however, comes from how the character interprets these events within his own mind. Hmm. From his perspective, he's a kind of tragic hero, doing what he must in a corrupt world for the sake of his family. But in reality, you can see he's actually kind of a piece of shit. Oh, a right. lecherous, greedy hypocrite whose penchant for alcohol and call girls is what led him to his current situation, not any nobler dedication to his family. Right, he's brought it upon himself and then sees himself as the victim. That cuts back and forth between an old school hmm. Fist of the North Star style Senin manga all while our protagonist commits increasingly heinous crimes. And it creates this amazing juxtaposition between the actions our character is carrying out and, and what he the thinks he's doing. Of how he justifies yeah. it to himself. Wow, he's making and himself this believe is the major it's right. Theme throughout the characters of Paranoia Agent. Damn, that's really cool. Each one of them has some form of fantasy that they escape into when the burdens of day to day life begin to weigh too heavily on them. And 
the reason this aspect of the show works so well is it plays directly into one of Satoshi Kon's greatest strengths as a director. Mm -hmm. His ability to treat reality as a malleable, transformable thing, something that can warp and distort under human perception Whoa. and give that sensation visual form. This was the basis for a lot of the mind-bending visuals from Paprika, Paprika yeah. with reality shifting as the characters enter different states of dreaming, but the same technique is used in Paranoia Agent to illustrate the particular viewpoints of each of its Yo. characters, with each character's individual fantasy given specific visual treatment, such as Zukiko, the character designer, mm -hmm. whose Marumi plush will start moving by itself and speaking to her, distracting Whoa. her from the torrent I mean, that's of cute, she regularly but... <laughs> receives online, and assuring her that everything will be okay. Okay, cool, I like and it. I'm particularly because she needs to hear it. Animation in these scenes. It looks class. As the animators yeah. actually take into account her disproportionate design as she struggles to move around under the weight of her gigantic head. head. Right, I like it's that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. as hell, but it's also a really interesting way of showing that a creature like this shouldn't physically exist. Move, yeah, shouldn't playing be able up to walk just around. how disconnected from reality Sukiko's fantasy actually, actually is. is. Wow. Other instances of this involve a boy who's so consumed with the delusion that he's a holy warrior that the visuals of the episode actually transform to convey the fantasy-based oh, quest Oh, wow, that's cool. Other forms of this visual manipulation are less direct, such as the visual change in tone for Detective Manua's episode. He's the assistant detective on the Lil Slugger case, and as the details of that case grow more bizarre and unsettling, he begins to become obsessed with it, to the point that his grip on reality steadily begins to loosen, uh -oh. and the visuals and sound of the episode distort to reflect Oh, that's that, cool. With the look of the show warping into this over so instead of it us just seeing it change for him the sound as well that's cool making for one of the more unsettling episodes of the entire series the reason i'm drawing so much emphasis to the visual direction behind this show is i think it captures something that satoshi Kon, as a director arguably did better than anyone else hmm. using the visuals in tandem with the narrative to help give us an understanding of the characters that would be impossible through just dialogue or exposition that's good storytelling. And one of my favorite examples of this is in the story of Detective Akari. For us While to know what's happening through just visual keys, really that's really good character. storytelling. Detective Akari features prominently throughout the series as the lead on the Little Slugger investigation. His art concentrates on how the Little Slugger attacks affects his home and professional life. Mm. I can remember watching a lecture from an old police detective before, and he said something to the effect of, there is always a motive for a crime, and if we ever get to the point where people attacking each other in the streets without reason is commonplace, then it won't just be a problem with the law. At that point, society itself will have failed, hmm. and the advent of the Lil Slugger case seems to be bringing up similar sentiments in Detective Akari. He's an old school police detective who believes in the cause and effect of crime and the virtues of good old fashioned police work. But as the case grows more bizarre and nonsensical, he starts to feel that his more traditional approach to law enforcement and his black and white views of the world Just no enough. longer apply to a Japan of the modern era. Right. And so he eventually escapes into a fantasy world the times are changing. of cardboard cutouts, Whoa. depicting life in Japan during the 1950s. The way he wants the it to be. The guys are cops and bad guys are burglars who carry large burlap sacks. And it's a section of the show that feels so beautifully charged with nostalgia and a desire to go back to a mm, time, I want to go back to a which really puts time that the I like. Exhaustion Detective Akari feels from having to reorientate himself in a constantly shifting society. So essentially, what you have with the show is a group of characters all struggling with their own personal problems and using various forms of fantasy as an escape, escape to those from problems. It, yeah. And by having such a large and varied cast, we begin to see that this pattern is not unique to any one of Paranoia. Like everyone has a certain kind of fantasy they want to go to. In general, even very minor characters in Paranoia Agent seem to be looking for some form of escapism. escapism. Right. From gossiping housewives to gross dudes who probably review anime on <laughs> the internet. Oh, <laughs> God. Oh, and no. it's <laughs> for fantasy where the little slugger comes back into our story.
I should probably mention at this point that if you want to enjoy Paranoia Agent completely unspoiled, then now is a good time to bow out of this video. I'm going to be oh, we've come so far. Let's check out. As I can, but to really dig into the meat of what this show actually is, some of the aspects of the plot, especially those regarding Little Slugger, are unavoidable. Ow. As Paranoia Agent progresses, we can see the slow and steady spread of the Morumi character. In earlier episodes, Morumi appears in small and insignificant ways. Hmm. Minor pieces of merchandise such as phone charms, plushes, or on t-shirts. But over the course of the show, we watch as the mascot is slowly spread by the media. Hmm. Becoming the subject of new stories and getting her own anime adaption. And as she does, the forms in which she appears begin to grow larger and more prominent. Moromi CDs, Moromi pillows, oversized Moromi backpacks. backpacks right, okay. And finally, in my favorite shot of the entire show, massive Moromi floats hovering ominously over the city, okay. nearly depicting her as some kind of grotesque pink deity. The reason Moromi's growth in popularity matters to the core of Paranoia Agent's plot is that Moromi and Little Slugger are essentially the same thing. What? As news of Little Slugger circulates, he begins to develop a kind of savior-like worship. As when someone is attacked by Little Slugger, the attacks invariably end up changing the victim's lives for the better. Oh. A woman suffering from a split personality wakes up to find her other self has vanished. A boy suspected of being Little Slugger is cleared of all suspicion after being attacked. And Sakiko, the character designer, has the burden of her professional responsibility lifted as she can't be oh, mate, to work what? Injured. And just like Moromi, information about Little Slugger is spread through the media and online message okay, boards. Cool. And as it is, rumours about who or what Little Slugger is begin to spin wildly out of control. Yeah. And just like Moromi, as they do... Little Slugger's physical form begins to warp and change, oh. transforming him into a massive, hulking, demonic creature. It's hard not to notice the odd parallels that keep being drawn between these two entities. That's really interesting. Both are beings whose popularity is hypercharged through the media. Growth. Both are entities that ultimately seem to bring people relief. Mm -hmm. And critically, both are creations of Tsukiko Sagi. Whoa. See, Tsukiko was never actually attacked in the first place. <gasps> Her injuries were self-inflicted. And Lil Slugger is a figment she invented as an escape from her professional obligations. Whoa. And that figment was then picked up and warped by the media and injected into an entire society of people all hungry for a means to escape the hardships. Oh my god! What? Or, as Satoshi Kon puts it, in order to go through life, everyone needs something apart, apart from, from reality. reality. And in the world of Paranoia Agent, that something is Little, little Slugger. Slugger. An all-purpose, social and professional get-out-of-jail-free card at the mere price of a single self-inflicted injury. And this is what the series is really about. Whoa. A society that causes people a systematic, mundane suffering how that suffering creates a need for fantasy and delusion, and how that fantasy is then accelerated and spread by modern media. And what's really fascinating That's about sick. this is that there is actual precedence for this kind of occurrence in Japan itself. During the late 70s in the Nagasaki prefecture, villages and cities were terrified by sightings of Kuchisaki Ona, mm. the slit mouth Oh yeah, slit mouth one, yeah. A tall, dark-haired female who hid a gaping, disfigured mouth behind a white face mask and was rumored to attack children with a pair of scissors as they traveled home from school. And bizarrely, despite there being no actual evidence of an attack of any kind ever occurring, sightings of Kuchisaki Ona grew so common and alarming that actual real-world precautions were taken. What? No Escorts way. Escorts were set up to accompany That's crazy. school and actual police patrols were increased. In other words, an entire community of people grew so obsessed with a fictional concept that real it became life real. action had to be Whoa. taken. I wasn't able to find any mention of Kuchisaki Ona in interviews with Cohn, but the similarities are so strong that I have to imagine it would have been an influence. Some on the story sort of influence on him, yeah, that's crazy. 
But what's more striking about Paranoia Agent now is less the events that might have influenced it, but more so the ones it foreshadowed. Last year we saw a wave of reports of supposedly violent clown sightings across both the UK and I remember Paris. this, yeah. And initially this led to a string of copycat pranks, but it also did actually result in two real-life murders. There was also the strange case of Marina Joyce, in which a single oh, conspiracy yeah. <laughs> theory video centering around the increasingly unusual behavior of a it's like, oh my father, god, is she being kidnapped? Is she being like community of people into an forced to make the videos? What's going on? Yeah. What both these incidents have in common is a piece of information picked up by social media and then warped and hypercharged in a way that would have been completely impossible even a decade ago. Mm. And this is also the major difference between these two and occurrences like the Dancing Plague or Kuchisaki Ona. We now live in a time where information can travel infinitely faster and further Instantly. than anything that was possible even a decade ago. And this is the future that Paranoia Agent envisioned. Paranoia Agent was released in 2004, two years before Twitter, one year before YouTube, oh. and the same month that Facebook launched. In other words, hmm. Paranoia Agent aired just as the ways we spread and consume information it were about to dramatically died. transform. Change. That's and crazy. And yet it predicted the kind of events this would yeah. lead to with such startling accuracy, it's genuinely chilling. And it makes you wonder that if Satoshi Kon were alive today, what he would have made of our current information-obsessed oh, climate. Yes. And what surreal and poignant visions of the future might have emerged from that. But as it stands, Paranoia Agent is special for me for two reasons. It's both a joyous and wholehearted celebration of the power of fantasy, mm. while also being a deeply cynical take on how we consume and spread information. Crazy. And I think it's this dual nature that gives Paranoia Agent a distinctive edge that I think honestly will never be replicated by any other show. But even more than that, Paranoia Agent stands as a brilliantly unique series. For I really want to watch this now, oh my god. History. Something that's equally dark, joyous, disturbing, and ultimately a fascinating look at a future that came to be. And this to me, friends, is why, why you should watch. watch. Paranoia Agent. Damn. Friends, thank you for joining me today, and I really hope you enjoyed the video. I'd like to once again thank my incredibly supportive patrons who helped fund this video and as ever make this channel possible. And if you would like to do the same for no more than a single dollar, you can do so over at patreon.com slash super This week, I'd like to personally thank... Gollock, Didrick, Accidental Curly Fru, <laughs> Kevin Bell, Amanda Howe, Arrow Pointing Left Matt, Forty Tentacles, and Beta Is My Name. Also, a quick reminder, I'll be appearing Saturday, November 11th at JCon in Dublin, so if you'd like to see me awkwardly stumble my way through my first ever panel, Aww. be sure to drop by. As ever, you can find me on the Let's Fight a Boss video game podcast for our spooktacular that really cool. that's, special. That series we'll sounds amazing. I thought it was a movie. Horror. Find me on Twitter at iPatchWolf. And as always, friends, take care of yourselves, and I'll see you next time. Oh my god. That, like, part of me wishes I didn't see the spoiler bit, but now I'm just like, oh, because that's really sold me. I like random twists like that. Like, I just finished watching um, Erased with my girlfriend, and... Oh my god, the way that ends is just like, yo! Um, but yeah, man, that seems proper crazy. I like that. That's really sick. Oh. <laughs> so yeah, that's why you should watch Paranoia Agents. Uh, thank you guys very much for watching. What do you guys think of that? What do you guys think of this? Click like, subscribe if you haven't already. Leave comments down below. Let me know what you want to discuss in future videos. And I'll see you guys. So you guys, next time.